On today's episode, I'm talking about a regenerative medicine approach to shoulder pain. Hello, this is Siddharth Damber from Chicago Arthritis and Regenerative Medicine, where we specialize in treating arthritis, tendinitis, injuries, and back pain, utilizing your own cells and the most up-to-date treatment options available. In today's episode, I am talking about shoulder pain and a regenerative medicine treatment approach to these conditions. Shoulder pain can be incredibly disabling and painful, and there are some good dedicated regenerative medicine treatments using your own cells that can make a huge difference in terms of your pain and function and that are worthwhile considering. Prior to starting, I need to put the obligatory disclaimer, which is that this is purely for educational purposes. If you truly have a shoulder issue or other medical problem, please pursue that with your dedicated, educated, and up-to-date musculoskeletal expert in order to get properly evaluated and in order to get properly diagnosed and treatment for what's going on. So when it comes to shoulder pain, there are a number of really interesting things to talk about. I'm going to be talking about the following conditions, including rotator cuff tears, shoulder strain and instability, as well as shoulder osteoarthritis. Now, the reality is that there is significant overlap in these conditions. And the reality is that instability can lead to rotator cuff tears as well as shoulder osteoarthritis. And if you have a rotator cuff tear, that can also lead to progressive instability and osteoarthritis separately. So there's a great deal of overlap in these conditions and having a understanding of how these are connected and how they evolve is really important. And then understanding how we treat these conditions, having that baseline understanding for what's driving the problem in these conditions makes a big difference because it'll make more sense in terms of how we're actually approaching treatment and what are realistic, reasonable expectations in order to reduce your pain, improve your function, and keep you really very uh, physically active and working and exercising at a high level long-term as well. So when it comes to treating the shoulder, understanding some of these big principles is a big part of this. And there are a couple of really key things to understand when it comes to treating the shoulder that I think will help to explain a lot. The first is the concept of biotensegrity. So biotensegrity is an essential understanding that in a structure that has many different individual units, that separately that may be very unstable. But when you take those separate units and put them closely aligned to one another and then layer other units on top of them, you get a more cohesive and stronger structure so that the stability and strength of the whole unit is much stronger and stable than the individual units. That's the concept of tensegrity and in biologic tissues, that's called biotensegrity. So there are layers of tissues that are involved in that, and that include certain key ligaments in the shoulder that would include the inferior glenohumeral ligament, the ligament over the acromial lig- uh, acromioclavicular joint, the ligaments off the coracoid process, as well as the ligaments that surround the shoulder joint as well. All of these ligaments together help to give significant structural support as your shoulder moves through a very dynamic range of motion. In addition, the rotator cuff, which are muscles and tendons around the shoulder, which help with not only the actual strength and movement, but also the stability as well. Stability is so key because it's what allows you to move in a stable manner. It's also what allows you to have strength when you're in different levels with your shoulder. Without stability, you're then prone to other injuries. It's important to understand that because 
Stability is something that we can help out with at different levels. And it's also the reason why even if you have, let's say, a rotator cuff tear, we may be treating ligaments in other areas. And if you have shoulder arthritis, we'll be treating those same ligaments and sometimes a rotator cuff as well if there's other signs of instability. The next really key principle to understand when it comes to treatment is the concept of image guidance. So when we're trying to treat very small areas of injury or damage in let's say a rotator cuff tendon, we have to be very precise. If we want to treat certain deep structures like ligaments, we need to be very exact with where we're placing that needle. We can do that utilizing x-ray guidance and ultrasound guidance. And that combination is what allows us to provide very precise, precision-oriented care that is very exact in terms of where it's targeting. I have a couple images that I'm placing up on the screen, which include showing injecting a shoulder joint um, that has a significant amount of arthritis, sneaking in the needle between some bone spurs, and how precise that has to be. The next image is of one where I'm injecting into a small tear within a rotator cuff tendon. Again, it's a very small area that needs to be treated, less than a millimeter in size in this case. And this is another case where I'm injecting not only the shoulder joint, but even the uh, superior labrum, superior anterior labrum, where you actually can tell the difference where you're injecting not only into the joint space and then a separate injection where you're actually injecting uh, into the labrum and you can confirm that under x-ray guidance because you can see a little bit of contrast uptake and really the point is if you want to treat some of these very fine and precise tissues you have to use the tools that are available and uh, I'll always say that until I actually develop x-ray vision, I'm gonna use the tools that are available. And that includes high-level x-ray and ultrasound guidance. In fact, for a musculoskeletal expert, those are our version of a stethoscope that we utilize to be very precise when it comes to diagnosis as well as treatment as well. The next key bit to understand is the idea of orthobiologics. So these are the treatments that we're utilizing in regenerative medicine. And it's important to understand what are the treatments that are available. So there are a few major ones that we're using very uh, regularly, and there's some newer ones that we're still trying to figure out how to properly use. And there's a continual understanding of how these treatments fit together. The first one is platelet-rich plasma. That is a really good base treatment, platelets where we actually take your own blood, concentrate it into a high concentration of your own platelets. We can utilize that for arthritic conditions, certain soft tissue injuries, including rotator cuff tears. You can actually help to strengthen some ligamentous instability as well. It's a very nice first line option. There's then bone marrow aspirin concentrate derived stem cells. That's a regulatory compliant treatment option that includes live stem cells. What's nice about this is that you're using your own cells. In addition, it's stronger than just platelets for certain types of injuries and can be appropriate. And there's a good amount of history and data when it comes to utilizing these treatments for orthopedic use. And so it's a really great, um, uh, it's a really great option as well. Then there's adipose. So it's important for people to understand that at the time of this filming and recording that adipose to isolate stem cells or stromal vascular fraction is considered illegal in the United States. It's legal in a few other places in the world. There's, there's some evidence that it can be helpful for orthopedic conditions, but again, there's issues from a regulatory standpoint to use it in this country. There are other ways to use fat where you can actually use it as a structural graft that may be helpful in certain soft tissue tears, um, but it's a little bit more um, of a niche product because of its regulatory issues. Then there's amniotic fluid uh, and um, other similar birth cord fluid products 
understand that there are no live cells in these products based on how they're processed. So they're not really a stem cell product. They do have growth factors and they can be helpful in some conditions. But again, I wouldn't consider that a first line option. Then there are other types of orthobiologic options that includes other types of cellular products from your own body. Platelet lysate is one option where you're just isolating the growth factors from the platelets. It's a really nice add-on to platelet-rich plasma, and it works a little bit differently in that the growth factors from the platelets are more quickly released there. Uh, there's an interleukin-1 receptor antagonist protein. That's an anti-inflammatory, naturally occurring anti-inflammatory that can be utilized. Alpha-2 macroglobulin is another newer one that's been recognized. It's another anti-inflammatory natural product. And then there's even platelet-poor plasma, which is essentially utilizing the, um, uh, the part of the plasma from your blood that is not isolated when you're making platelet-rich plasma. It can be helpful for some conditions, including uh, if you have a muscle injury. It's another nice option there. The main takeaway is that when it comes to orthobiologic options, you have different treatment options and a skilled musculoskeletal practitioner who's in this field will have a good sense for what you should use based on your issue and will have a good sense for how to combine these because there are some unique ways to actually use these together, which is pretty neat and useful as well. So when it comes to treating the shoulder, understanding some of these big principles is a big part of this. And there are a couple of really key things to understand when it comes to treating the shoulder that I think will help to explain a lot. The first is the concept of biotensegrity. So biotensegrity is an essential understanding that in a structure that has many different individual units, that separately that may be very unstable, but when you take those separate units and put them closely aligned to one another and then layer other units on top of them, you get a more cohesive and stronger structure so that the stability and strength of the whole unit is much stronger and stable than the individual units. That's the concept of tensegrity and in biologic tissues that's called biotensegrity. So there are layers of tissues that are involved in that and that includes certain key ligaments in the shoulder that would include the inferior glenohumeral ligament, the ligament over the acromial, lig acromial clavicular joint, the ligaments off the coracoid process, as well as the ligaments that surround the shoulder joint as well. All of these ligaments together help to give significant structural support as your shoulder moves through a very dynamic range of motion. In addition, the rotator cuff, which are muscles and tendons around the shoulder, which help with not only the actual strength and movement, but also the stability as well. Stability is so key because it's what allows you to move in a stable manner. It's also what allows you to have strength when you're in different levels with your shoulder. Without stability, you're then prone to other injuries. It's important to understand that because Stability is something that we can help out with at different levels. And it's also the reason why, even if you have, let's say a rotator cuff tear, we may be treating ligaments in other areas. And if you have shoulder arthritis, we'll be treating those same ligaments and sometimes a rotator cuff as well, if there's other signs of instability. The next kind of shoulder issue that's worthwhile thinking about for regenerative medicine treatments is a rotator cuff tear. Or injury. So a mild version of a rotator cuff injury would just be rotator cuff tendonitis or tendinopathy. In that case, platelet-rich plasma is a really great first-line option. Injecting into the tendon, injecting into the tendon sheath that surrounds the tendon, and then also injecting into the ligaments that are offering stability for the shoulder as well. On the other hand, if you have a partial thickness tear, that means an injury to the tendon that's more than just a irritation to the tendon where there's now a um, 
partial indentation and tear of the tendon, but where it's not fully torn. In that kind of case, platelet-rich plasma is again, usually a good first line option, but there is some good data recently also showing very good results with bone marrow aspirate concentrate stem cells. I'll talk about that in a moment. The last one is if you have a full thickness tear. So a full thickness tear would be where you have an injury to the tendon where there's essentially a gap within the full length of the tendon. If you don't have retraction, that means if the tendons are still, if the edges of the tendon are still approximated together, bone marrow aspirate concentrate can still be helpful. If you actually have retraction of the tendon where it's pulled apart, surgery really should be your option at that point. In case you go for surgery, there is evidence from Philip Hernigue in France that then utilizing bone marrow aspirate concentrate derived stem cells after surgery can help to prevent that 30% chance of a repeat tear as well. So great to understand how different orthobiologic treatments can be helpful in a rotator cuff injury and tear, and even cases where if you need to go for surgery, where an orthobiologic treatment can still be helpful after surgery as well. On the screen is an example of injecting platelet-rich plasma into a partial thickness rotator cuff tear. Really helpful to understand that we are putting cells into a very small area of damage in a very precise and precision-oriented manner. That can be done under imaging guidance, and this is a great example of where that was utilized and significantly helpful in this individual's case. The next condition that can be treated with orthobiologics for the shoulder would include shoulder osteoarthritis. So shoulder osteoarthritis is, there's a couple of key things to understand here. Number one is that you develop shoulder osteoarthritis because of chronic instability. Chronic instability because of an injury to the ligaments, injury to the rotator cuff tendons, eventually puts more stress on the shoulder so that the actual joints themselves get damaged. There's two main joints of the shoulder. There's actually a couple more than that, but the two main ones that I'll talk about are the glenohumeral joint, which is the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. And then there's the AC joint, which is at the top of the shoulder as well. If you have a mild degree or moderate degree of osteoarthritis in either one of those joints, platelet-rich plasma can be an excellent treatment option. If you have more significant osteoarthritis, let's say a moderate or advanced degree of osteoarthritis, then bone marrow aspirate concentrate derived stem cells is likely a better treatment option. Again, also important to understand that if you have instability, which is part of that degenerative osteoarthritis process, utilizing either your own platelets or dextrose prolotherapy to treat the ligaments is a key part of treating shoulder osteoarthritis and can be helpful even if you have significant advanced osteoarthritis. Lastly, for some of the other joints that are also part of the shoulder, that would include the sternoclavicular joint, which is more toward the midline sternum in the front of your chest, or even along the shoulder blade, orthobiologic treatments can still be helpful in those cases because you can improve stability, because you can actually inject into the sternoclavicular joint, other areas that can drive pain that can be treated as well. On the screen now are a couple pictures that I want to show that I think are helpful to understand how we're injecting into the shoulder joint. The first one is a picture under x-ray guidance where you see contrast within the shoulder joint as well as into the labrum. The labrum on this picture is a small triangular area and the shoulder joint is the contrast that's flowing in between the ball and socket joint there. Great to understand that you can inject both of those areas, the labrum as well as the shoulder joint, really under one sort of imaging setup. This is again, a picture of someone who has very significant osteoarthritis and basically sneaking in a needle into the front of the shoulder joint and being able to inject that in a competent and precise fashion is very key. In addition, while you'll see some very large osteophytes or a bone spur in this case, 
It's important to understand that that's not what's driving pain. That's a sign of instability. When your body has instability because of a ligament that's been injured, you'll see those kind of bone spurs develop because that's one way of trying to add a little bit of stability. That's a normal response to your body. You don't need to shave that off or cut it off because that's not what's driving pain. What's driving pain is instability and then shoulder osteoarthritis and treating the instability and the arthritis is what'll make this better. Lastly, what's some of our evidence that these treatments work? So there's a range of evidence out there. The ones I'm putting up on the screen are some more recent evidence and trials that have shown efficacy. The first one that was published in early 2020 is a pretty exciting one from the Center of Schultz Clinic in Denver, where they essentially treated partial thickness rotator cuff tears with a person's own bone marrow drive stem cell treatments, and they compared that to physical therapy alone. And they found a significant greater improvement in the bone marrow stem cell treatment group with up to a 90% improvement in pain at the one and two year mark. So really good results. There's also good evidence that even treating shoulder osteoarthritis, that you can get a 50% plus improvement if you have significant osteoarthritis, if you're injecting bone marrow drive stem cells in that case as well. So there's solid evidence that these treatments can be helpful in various shoulder conditions. I think what makes some of the biggest difference is if you're taking a comprehensive approach, and that means treating everything that's pathologic, whether that's the instability component, inflammation component, nerve component, utilizing the right tools that are available to get a good result, and then utilizing the right orthobiologic or products that are available that are safe, low risk, and effective. I hope this gave you a good sense for how we're able to treat various shoulder conditions with regenerative medicine treatments. If you found this content interesting or helpful, consider subscribing either to the video that you're watching, podcast that you're listening to, or to my email subscription as well. Thank you for your time. Have a good day and live well. Bye-bye.